I've got a letter with your name on it, and you're gonna get that letter because people care about you! There's a lot riding on the last cartoon from Nickelodeon, Milmost Post. It's a rare, fully original, animated concept. And that's doubly notable in the face of the new series Lead-In, a spin-off of the channel's most successful and influential series ever. In the face of seemingly ever safer and uninspired programming bets, can this new Nick cartoon deliver? Let's review the show's big premiere. Middlemost Post is Nickelodeon's newest series, and being of the rarity known as a cartoon with a completely original concept, one of its most interesting new launches of 2021 almost by default. Premiering after the Patrick Star Show on July 9th, 2021, as if to insinuate we won't be getting another such one of these for a long time, the show details the adventures of a former rain cloud named Parker, his friend Angus, and pet walrus Russell as they deliver the titular mail service all over Mount Middlemost. So far, booked for 20 episodes, the series was created by John Trabick III, storyboard director on SpongeBob SquarePants. And, as someone who works on SpongeBob SquarePants, probably someone who's been having a really tough year, as the SpongeBob fandom at large ruthlessly tears apart even the scantest hint of an expansion to that franchise, with more zeal than even my cynicism in this age of reboots can muster anymore. The premiere of the show is preceded by a set of shorts in the month-long run-up, but for the sake of time and clarity, I won't cover them. And instead focus on the show's first proper episode, first delivery, chore or less, in keeping with my usual reviewing procedure. So with that out of the way, it's time to ask the big, pun-laden question. Can this show deliver? Let's open up this puppy. In first delivery, the Milmos Post team are tasked with a challenging shipment, getting a letter to someone who hasn't received mail for as long as can be remembered, and someone who doesn't seem terribly open to the idea to begin with. Cue the most grueling obstacle course this side of the Wipeout reboot on TBS to get there. And in chore or less, when housework becomes an unappealing proposition, the mounting chores threaten to take the whole ship down. I'll be up to Parker and Russell to pick up the slack. You see, Russell, this is what you call a teachable moment. I give the kid one day before Parker realizes the importance of chores. The first time I watched the episode, it was hard for me to articulate my thoughts on this show. In my eyes, there's a lot riding on Milmo's Post, as one of the first cartoons to hail out of Nick's US production apparatus from their current color of content which kicked off in 2020. Its pony is British, and the defunct Ollie's pack was Canadian. That goes double for the seemingly intensifying stream of reboots, spin-offs, and rehashes we're having at the moment, including the one that premiered just prior to this show. But after a rewatch and some distance, I think I have a clearer head on it. It's fun, if functional, and while it may not be groundbreaking or the next cartoon community obsession, it's cheerful, competent content, which, thanks to another network, <coughs> is a level of quality we can't take for granted anymore. In trying to understand the show from a qualitative standpoint, I kind of likened it somewhat to Nick's recent live-action creation, Side Hustle. It sort of plays fast and loose with the storytelling, except Milmo's post doesn't really feel that fast at all, so maybe slow and loose. But while that might be a detriment if done poorly, the show plays it loose in all the right places. The gaps in the show's conceptual cohesion are so placed that they're plausible and make sense for the furtherance of the story and creative development. The characters are well-pitched, the humor works solidly, and the show's casual aesthetic contributes to how cohesive it is, and also serves to root it, somewhat, in the same kind of realism that's been felt a lot on other Nick cartoons of late. The characters on Milmo's Post feel very well-placed. Parker is as excitable as he is versatile, both physically and metaphorically. Angus may be a bit staid, but executes really well as something of a guide to Parker. And despite having no lines of their own, Russell serves perfectly as a straight man. Meh, animal. The trio of the gamut run is somewhat common when you put it like that, but it's done from just enough of a different angle that isn't all that predictable. After watching both episodes, I came to the realization that both of these halves serve an important expositional purpose. First Delivery serves as a solid establishment of our main characters and their dynamic, whereas Chora Less is introducing us to the show's world. From what I've seen of it so far, including the second episode which aired the following week, 
It feels like Milmo's post might be trying to hang their hat on comprehensive world building, something that another Nick show also did really well. Breadwinners, about seven years ago. Admittedly, we've seen the plot of Chore Less there already, just with more video game references, but given the premise centering on delivery service, just like with Breadwinners, it's a good idea for Milmo's post to go down that route. I'm not sure if the world building is as strong or as complete here as it was in Pangea, but they seem to be laying down the bones of that strategy promisingly. I'm willing to give them some time to work the kinks out of it. While it sounds like I'm cutting Nick slack for something I've railed on Cartoon Network for on multiple occasions, the concept not playing out well until much later, in the immediate term, the world building does execute convincingly enough. Milamos Post is a fun, creative, decently done show that's at least worth a try. It's a solid watch, but it's not going to set the world on fire. It's not going to make respect for Nickelodeon cartoons or the wire cartoon community happen either, but maybe that wasn't the point. The show has a solid foundation, promising elements, and the creative potential to be a long runner, but don't expect it to blow your mind or change your life. For me, this show evokes the unassuming positions of a lot of the fare we get out of foreign locales, like Canada or Europe. We don't pay mind to them, sure, but we also don't have lofty expectations for them that a lot of pure episodics like this can't necessarily meet. Melmo's Post brings that kind of understated energy to the fore of a major US kids network. For me, it's a welcome care package, but I don't know if audiences at large will see it that way. You did a good thing, Parker. A real good thing. If I did a good thing, then why does it feel so bad? It's another solid piece of Nick's content puzzle, but in terms of execution, it's in a challenging position. It's a show that, in my eyes, feels 85 or 90% of the way there, but it runs the risk of being overlooked in favor of some of the channel's stronger new fare. Chiefly for now, it's Pony, along with other new shows in future, unless it can jump that last mile and pull through on its promise. Arguably, in any case, this is probably a show that will come up as underrated in five years. And if it fares poorly in attracting audiences, it will also be one of the reasons why we'll have Untailed Spongebob Chocolate Guy spin-off in five years. Rings seem unspectacular for now, so it's something I'll keep an eye on in the back of my mind. But that doesn't change that Milamos Post has got a good head on its shoulders. And who am I to ran this cartoons parade? Dear Cloud, looking forward to our next romp. Don't forget to bring them in. Signed, Levi Alone? Angus, he wrote me back. He wants to be friends! For more reviews like this, hit subscribe so you don't miss the last from the world of television. Thanks to my supporters for making this video possible. You can join them for as little as 3 bucks a month at benjj.tk slash join. And speaking of It's Pony, you can watch my review of it from last year up here or down in the description. I'm Benzie Johnson Jr., I'm enthusiastic about television, and I'll see you next time.